one of Dell's most iconic lineup of laptops is the XPS series. It's sleek, made out of CNC machine aluminum, and this XPS 13 is no different. What's unique about this XPS 13 9345 though is that it is using the Snapdragon X Elite X1e8100 chipset. In today's video, we're going to talk about this laptop. Is this a good laptop? Is it worth the price of 6,999 ringgit? Well, hit that like button and share this video with your friends and subscribe as well as that will really help us out a lot. So, the XPS 13 9345 that we have here is in the graphite color. It is darker, almost dark grey and it is also available in the platinum color as well. The design, if you've already seen the latest XPS, then this is gonna be the same. It's really minimalist and when we open up the lid, there is no trackpad. It is completely hidden, spanning from somewhere around below the spacebar to around the right alternate key. It works really well and the palm rejection is surprisingly good too, so no complaints here. The function row is at the top of the keyboard and it is also hidden until the laptop is turned on. We can switch between the conventional F1 to F12 or multimedia keys by just hitting the Fn key to toggle between them, so this is pretty standard. Since we're here, let's now talk about the keyboard first. It is the same as the XPS 16 that we have reviewed earlier, so this keyboard is bouncy, has good size and the travel distance is really good. However, the keys are a little bit stiff, so it does require quite a bit more strength to press the keys down. I'm still not a fan of these arrow keys, especially the half height up and down keys. Since the keyboard spans throughout the entire laptop, the speaker is placed elsewhere and I am actually happy to report that this laptop actually sounds fantastic. It doesn't sound teeny even for such a small laptop and I'm just surprised. Have a listen here. Now let's talk about the screen. The XPS laptops always have the best looking screens and this XPS 13 is no different either. For our particular unit here, it has the most basic screen available for the XPS 13. A 13.4 inch IPS LCD non-touch screen at 1920 by 1200 pixel in resolution and also goes up to 120Hz refresh rate. And this screen is still good even for the base model. It can go up to around 500 nits of brightness in its default mode and can achieve 93.65% of sRGB with a very low Delta E number. Now, we can change the color profile to quote-unquote VV, but it doesn't actually seem to do anything. So just leave everything in its default settings and you are good to go. There is also an option to upgrade to a higher resolution display with touch or straight go to an OLED screen. Either of these options will be much more expensive, but they will yield a much better experience than this. But it kind of depends if you can utilize it or not. The ports though are actually quite disappointing. We have only two USB 4 40 gigabits per second ports, one on each side. There is no audio jack. I mean, it is going to be an annoying problem if you want to use an earphone or headphone or whatever else. What kind of upgrades that we can do on the XPS 13 9345? Well, none actually. Everything is soldered down to the motherboard except for the M.2 2280 SSD. We can swap it for whatever we want and that's it. It's kind of expected for a 13 inch laptop these days. Now, I know that we have previously said that the XPS 16 9640 is not really a good laptop. It's still an XPS laptop after all, but what's different between that and this XPS 13? Well, it basically boils down to the size. The XPS 16 is basically a larger version of this laptop. Same exact build quality and materials, but just scaled larger. And this form factor just doesn't work for a larger size. The XPS 16 was way too heavy and it tried to add a GPU inside, yet the performance is severely limited. However, if we take a look at the XPS 13 though, this form factor works for this laptop 
because it is lightweight and is actually pleasant to use. I carry around this laptop way more compared to any other laptops that I have because of its compact size and also its overall build quality and also the form factor. And since this is a Snapdragon X Elite laptop, the battery life is exceptionally good. I'm getting at least 8 hours on a single charge while doing my usual work on Google Chrome, listening to music on YouTube Music and also mixed in with some YouTube videos. That's actually amazing coming out from that 55 watt hour battery. Yes, only 55 watt hours and you can get such a great battery life. It is compatible with all of the things that I'm using it for, so no problems there in that regard. It's speedy and also very responsive. However, if I try to play some games on this laptop, then it, yeah, it's not gonna be a good time. Games are still not launching, constantly crashing, or just render the games wrongly. Sometimes the game does launch at first, but then decided to not launch ever again. <sighs> Nothing has improved since we have tested the Snapdragon X Elite a few months ago. Video at the top right corner there or in the description below if you want to know more about it. I just think that um, the Snapdragon X Elite, it kind of really depends on what you want to do with this laptop. Otherwise, it's gonna be a problematic time. It's just very disappointing to see both Microsoft and Qualcomm not doing anything to improve the experience even months after its launch. This specific configuration of the Dell XPS 13 9345 is at 6,999 ringgit. And I think that it is definitely expensive considering that we can get the XPS 13 9340 that is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H at the exact same price with the exact same design. It's just that Getting an Intel powered laptop is definitely not going to be as power efficient as the Snapdragon version but at least we don't have to worry about incompatibility issues because Intel is using x86 and up until now all apps on Windows are made for x86. And that's all that we have to share with you in today's video. I honestly think that the XPS 13 is a great design for its size and weight but the lack of an audio jack could be an issue for many people. The Snapdragon chip is an entirely different issue, so I recommend you to stay away from the Snapdragon X Elite unless you know what you're signing up for and you can live with all of the issues. Now, do let us know, do you like the XPS 13? What do you think of the Snapdragon X Elite chip? Let me know down in the comment section below and remember to subscribe and watch our video where we test some games on the Snapdragon X Elite laptop. It's another laptop, not the XPS 13, but all of the incompatibility issues are still the same today. And we'll see you guys in the next video.